Hi, it's Dwyer. It's March the 2nd, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now it's always great because the division's unsettled and because, in my opinion, it's the most important division in boxing. Let's play favorites. It's always a good thing to find a new world-class heavyweight. I want people to know about Jele Jean. Again, it's Jele Jean. He is Chinese. He is 37 years old. He is about six and a half feet tall. He's huge. His nickname is the Big Bang. He is a southpaw. And he is a murderous puncher. Absolutely murderous puncher. Now, he's unbeaten. But his last fight was a draw. And it was a bit of a disappointing draw for him because he starts the fight by knocking down the other guy three times. The second half of the fight, he's out of gas. Right? He seems to have stamina problems. He seemed to be winded. But there is a good side of the story. He's an excellent clincher. He knows how to lean over the other guy's back. And the guy he fought, I think his name was Jerry Forrest, was himself, something like 6'2". And this 6'6 guy knew exactly how to use his weight, use his size to grab the other guy and to lean on him. Right? Let me also say, too, that this guy is two-handed. Even though he is a southpaw, the guy throws an excellent, and I mean excellent, right hook. Let me also say that he can throw a straight left hand, but he could also throw a great left hook. Offensively, I thought the guy was impressive. Now, his hand speed isn't great. I'll be the first to say that. But he's able to make up for it with excellent timing and with combinations. First, he tries to set the table with his jab. His jab is an entree type of jab, not the main meal. In other words, he's not trying to beat you by just using height and length to stay behind the jab and win slow rounds. No, he has the jab as an appetizer, then he's going to hit you with punches off the jab. He can lead with power shots. So the first knockdown in his fight against Jerry Forrest, you'll notice he leads with the power shot. Doesn't need to set it up. Is very coordinated for a guy who's 6'6". Very coordinated. Right? Right? very hard to defend yourself against because he's cagey. He plays a distance game. He's not a big man trying to just run over you, trying to get up close to you and impose his size on you. No, this is a guy who wants a little bit of a cushion so that he could surprise you with the right hook with the straight left hand or with the lead left hook. He could lead with all of the punches. Now, the downside is that the guy appears to have fought people in witness protection. The downside is that after his opponent got drilled three times in the first three rounds, the opponent was able to get off the canvas and outbox him such that the fight was deemed a draw, right? Let me tell you too, the last round is fascinating 
Zhang seems to be completely out of it. He's holding on. He's struggling. It's so bad that in the last 10 seconds, he turns his back to his opponent to buy time. It works. It got him to the final bell. But my point to you is, in the heavyweight division, especially when you're dealing with a guy this big, with this level of power from a southpaw stance, right, who actually has power in both hands. He's not relying on one punch. And a guy who knows to put his hands up. I'm not saying he's defensively blessed, but what I am saying is he's defensively aware. Right? He has decent defense. In other words, this isn't the big guy who thinks he can just run through you. No, this is the big guy who doesn't want to get hit. He has his hands up. He's protecting himself. He's far away. Then he seems able to move in spurts. Right? He has what I call ring coverage. Right? His hand speed, again, is deceptive. Let me say this, too. Like many gifted punchers, this guy doesn't look like he's leaning into shots. But yet, his opponent crumbles. He has a Vitaly Klitschko deceptive center of gravity that's hard to read. In other words, it looks like he's just leaning over a little bit and tapping the guy. And the other guy will go down. Hard. Right? This guy has great power. And it doesn't show itself in his wind-up and punching style. So, at heavyweight, where you have certain fighters who have flaws, but have parts of their game that give them an opportunity to beat anyone in the division if certain things happen. For example... Andy Ruiz, hand speed, fastest hands in the division, combination puncher, right? If he lulls someone like Anthony Joshua into the pocket and is able to land the first few punches of the combination, his opponent's going to be in trouble. Adam Konachki, the Brooklyn fighter, right? Very high motor, very high volume. Determined to walk you down, to crash the pocket. Can do so round after round for 12 rounds. Right? I'm aware that Konachki lost to Hellenius. I'm aware that Andy Ruiz lost to Parker. At least it's what the judges thought. And lost to Joshua in the rematch. But understand, just like those guys have a skill set where if an opponent isn't ready for it, those guys could lift the title. I believe this guy, Jaylee Zhang, fits in that category. You see him, you think he's slow. He's not that slow-handed. You see him hitting guys, not really leaning into the punch. Folks, this guy has prodigious punching power. I'm sure many fighters are going to look at his last fight and say, oh, this guy has stamina problems, right? He's barely hanging on the last few rounds against Jerry Forrest, who isn't a household name. Just make sure you don't overlook the first four rounds of this fight. You're going to see that Forrest is completely overmatched. Also, take a look at Zhang's defense, you're going to notice he has the kind of defense where he should be able to block a few shots coming back. I think this guy would give a lot of guys at heavyweight problems. Understand, I feel the heavyweight division right now is a bit overrated. Right? I think you have some guys toward the top of the heavyweight division who aren't exactly defensively blessed. I'll concede I would pick Tyson Fury over this guy because Fury has a problem with smaller, faster guys. A guy Fury size like this, Fury might be able to just fight that fight on his back foot behind the jab. 
right? Fury can win slow rounds behind a jab. Fury can convincingly outbox a powerful opponent who really isn't an elite boxer, which Fury is. But I believe everyone else in the heavyweight division would have a hard time against this guy. I'll agree. He hasn't fought great competition to this point. I'll agree he's 37 years old. But let's remember, it's not like 37 is that old in the heavyweight division. Let me also say too that if this guy gets an opportunity against a higher ranked heavyweight, because his calling card is his power, public opinion could flip on him overnight if he's able to score a KO over, let's say, a Dylan White, for example, or a Prevetkin, right? This guy has the power to do so. I'm not saying he does. I'm just saying he's better than advertised, especially now, since he's facing a lot of public criticism after the recent draw where he collapses in the latter part of the fight. Right? He does have to work on stamina, but let's be real here. A guy with KO punching power in both hands will often have fights where stamina is not an issue, where the fight is over in the first five to six rounds. Right? Let's just say he can throw the gauntlet down to the division and say, okay, who among you think you can last with me that long? to make my stamina an issue? I believe the answer to that question is very few. This guy is dangerous, just like you need to keep an eye on Andy Ruiz. Just like, in my opinion, you need to keep an eye on Adam Konotsky. I believe you need to keep an eye on Jaylin Zhang. Right? This guy, southpaw, two-handed, Decent defense. Can hit you to the body, can hit you up top. Has an assortment of punches. Doesn't have a tell. Can lead with power shots. He's dangerous. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'm going to put in my favorites folder here the highlights of his recent fight. Um, I would encourage people to watch the entire fight. Simply so you could see him deteriorate over the last half of the fight, right? This is the way heavyweight boxing used to be. I remember George Foreman in the 70s, right? If you could get Foreman to the later rounds, you were facing a different fighter, right? The Jimmy Youngs of the world, guys with skills who could get Foreman to the later rounds, had a chance, right? But understand, that's like asking a guy to climb a mountain to have a chance, a lot of today's current heavyweights won't be able to get by the first half of the fight with this guy. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.